Hello, friends, and welcome to the PrepWell podcast. I'm your host, Phil Black. And if you have an 8th, ninth, or 10th grader with big aspirations like the Ivy League or military service academies like West Point, ROTC, or athletic scholarships, boom, you've come to the right place. My specialty, my superpower, if you will, is preparing families for these competitive programs. I'll teach you what your child should do, when they should do it, and how you can help. So stick around and prepare to out-prepare. Hello, friends, and welcome to the PrepWell podcast. For most of us, we are about halfway through the summer. We still have all of August to go before we start school again, in whatever form that might take. So today, I'm making a plea to all of you prep wellers, and I hope soon to be prep wellers out there, to make the most of this unusual time. And by unusual time, I'm not referring to COVID or the protests and riots in the streets or the lack of baseball on TV. I'm referring to the unusual downtime that most teenagers are facing right now. In general, this summer, there's a conspicuous lack of conventional jobs to go to, internships to endure, sports camps to enjoy, and even typical social outings, like weddings and beach parties and concerts. Instead, many students find themselves at home for long stretches of time, with, in some cases, very few obligations. I'm not saying this is the case for every student, but a lot of students, including prep wellers, are spending a lot of time at home. And without guilt or regret, by the way, because it's almost like you're being forced to stay at home. So my question is, what are you doing with this precious time? And yes, this is precious time. Because I'm old enough to remember, six months ago, when many students, including prep wellers, including my own sons, by the way, were on a treadmill of activity so tightly wound that it often left them exhausted, depleted, and searching far and wide for an hour or two of downtime to do whatever they wanted, to sit and stare at a blank wall, if that's the best they could get. I know students who would have been overjoyed, like you wouldn't believe, for just One hour with nothing to do. And now, six months later, many students have, in theory, 15, 16, 18 hours a day for weeks and weeks and weeks at a time with virtually nothing to do. And as hard as it was for me to do, I held my tongue for the entire month of July. Yes, I made suggestions, I gave advice. And there are plenty of things for prep wellers to do inside our online course. And yes, I hoped that some students would find inspiration and motivation to really get going during July. But I mostly held back. I did not want to come across as some kind of brutal, callous taskmaster driving kids into the ground during a global pandemic. I wanted to be, I wanted to let teenagers be teenagers and just hang out and enjoy some unscheduled time, do nothing if they wanted to. After all, most students, especially prep wellers, who've been running and gunning for years, they deserved some downtime. They needed some decompression time. Great. I hope you enjoyed it. In fact, they may never get this type of unscheduled time ever again. So I gave them the month of July to do what they would. But now it's August, and I'm coming in hot. Because if you're a student, and if, and this is a big if, if you aspire to do big things in your life, I don't care if that means going to a competitive college or joining the military or playing sports at the next level or becoming a successful entrepreneur, if you aspire to do big things and you're rolling into summer month number two, August, without a plan, you're wrong. You are wrong. It's not going to happen for you. That's the truth. And if you're okay with that, I'm okay with that. You be you. But don't complain when you don't end up where you want to be or where you think you want to be. If you're waking up at 11 a.m. or noon and have nothing on your calendar, 
In fact, you haven't even thought about a single thing that you need to accomplish that day. And you don't have a checklist of what you plan to get done that day. You are wrong. If you're spending four, five, six hours a day playing Call of Duty, Minecraft, GFA, you're wrong. If your parents ask you what's on your agenda for the day and you don't have an answer, you're wrong. And you don't have a chance. You don't have a chance to do big things. You do have a chance to be like everybody else. Because that's what everybody else does. And I know that what everybody else does can be very seductive. Everybody else makes up the middle of the bell curve. Everybody else seeks comfort at every turn. Everybody else does whatever makes them happy at any given time. They avoid discomfort. They run from responsibility. They avoid doing hard things. They have no discipline. My friend calls them good time Charlies. Whatever is the most fun, convenient, and comfortable thing to do, they do that. And by the way, they normally do it pretty well. And they find friends who want to do those very same things. And as a group, they get really good at being good time Charlies. That's not going to cut it if you want to be different. If you want to be different, you have to do what other people don't do. By definition, that's what being different means. It means you get up early when you don't have to. It means you eat foods that are good for you and will fuel your day as opposed to what's easy and fast and convenient. It means you drink water and a lot of it instead of energy drinks and soda or worse. It means you crack open that SAT book when everybody else is sitting on their couch scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling to infinity on their phones. It means you don't take the easy way out. You look for a hard way in. It means you don't take the short-term view. You take the long-term view. It means you read with your eyeballs for an hour a day even if you'd rather spend that hour laughing at TikTok videos. It means that if your friends are doing unproductive and dumb stuff, you find new friends. It means you complete a draft of your Common App essay, even if you're scared that it won't be good enough. It means you research colleges, even if you find out that you don't really know what you're looking for. It means you train for your sport, even if you might not have a season. It means you spend 20 minutes a day, 20 minutes out of a 15-hour day working on Khan Academy math problems to make sure you're not falling behind. It means you write in a journal every other day just to make sure that you don't forget how to write the English language with words and punctuation and letters and stuff. It means you say no when your buddies invite you to their basement to, you know, wink, wink, have a good time. It means you pause before you post something that you shouldn't, even though you'd get a quick laugh from your buddies. It means that you zig when everybody else zags. If you want to be different, get used to doing things differently. As soon as you start to do what everybody else is doing, you're getting off track. So I want you to think to yourself right now, Am I different or am I a good time Charlie? If you're with me and you've been cranking away for the last month and doing lots of great things, awesome. I hope this just reinforces everything that you've been doing and I urge you to keep it up. If you're a good time Charlie and you know that that's not going to get you where you want to go, then it's time for a change. We have one month to go before school starts, theoretically. Let's not worry about whether it'll be online or in person or a hybrid. Let's think about how we're going to make the best of this very unusual month of August 2020. Of course, inside Preple Academy, I provide dozens of ways to optimize your personal program from time management skills to organizing your computer files creating a winning study environment at home, 
So please review those lessons and implement that advice as time permits. But today, I want to focus on one thing and one thing only for the month of August. Because otherwise, we could go down a bunch of rabbit holes here. And we don't really have time for that. It's a very simple thing, one would think. And that is writing down a checklist of things you plan to accomplish every day. Writing down a checklist of things that you plan to accomplish every day. This is a huge pet peeve of mine. I see so few high school students who do this. And the ones who do do this are orders of magnitude more successful than those who don't. It's not a coincidence. I don't care if you write this list on a whiteboard, blackboard, napkin, notebook, on your phone, on your bedroom wall in crayons. I don't care. I just want to see a list. I want you to write down a list of what you plan to accomplish every day, even if it's five bullet points, five words, hieroglyphics, symbols. I don't care. I'm not going to overcomplicate this because I'll lose some of you. Yes, I've given you lessons inside Preple Academy about how to make, quote, smart goals and how detailed or how general to get and so on. It's too late for that for some of you. And if you're not a prep weller, you don't have access to those lessons. For the month of August, I simply want you to write down what is on your daily agenda. Ideally, you do this the night before so that when you wake up, boom, you're cooking with gas. This simple practice of writing a checklist does a few important things. Number one, it exposes the lazy do-nothings. If you don't ever write anything down, then you never feel disappointed when one day is just like the previous day. You wake up at noon, you roll into the kitchen, you grab a snack from the snack cabinet, you start scrolling on your phone, bing, bang, boom, all of a sudden it's 11 p.m. and you go to bed. Congratulations, you survived another day. We know that's not what successful people do. Successful people, different people, want to do more than just survive the day. What else does it do? Writing a checklist focuses your attention. It allows you to track your progress on work and projects and exercise milestones and research and studying. It gives you confidence that you're a productive human being. It also allows you to prioritize the tasks because you see them in front of you with your eyeballs, instead of holding them in your head. And by the way, if you want to take your life to the next level, you start with the most difficult task on your list in the morning. We had a lesson about this a few weeks ago inside Preppel Academy called Swallow That Frog. Refer back to that if you need a refresher. And lastly, writing a checklist will teach you a very valuable skill that will become increasingly important as your level of work and responsibility begins to take off, as in when you head off to college. Let me summarize. This July and August of 2020 may represent two of the most unique summer months in a teenager's life for the next 50 years. And the question is, how did July go? And what's the plan for August? Well, July is over, so whatever happened, happened. If you were a savage prep weller who kept the pedal to the metal, congratulations, your hard work will pay off. If you didn't really get that much done in July, and every day seemed to blend into the next, and you were not particularly productive, then you have a choice to make as we move into August. If you want to be just like everybody else, then maintain course and speed and blow another month. Merry Christmas. If you don't want to be like everybody else and you want to be different, now it's time to tighten up your game. And one very basic way to start this journey is by making sure that every day you wake up, you have a list of things to do that day that will get you closer to your ultimate goal, a checklist. 
Keep in mind, this represents a very basic instruction for students who need something to kickstart their program. Inside Preppel Academy, of course, I go to great lengths to teach and coach the finer points of to-do lists, checklists, how to create them, when to create them, how to prioritize tasks, what methods to use. These lessons are all readily available to my online PrepWell students with the motivation and the mindset to go to the next level. In the meantime, start with a checklist. Speaking of checklists, I'm about to check off Publish Weekly Podcast from my checklist because that's all I've got for you today, folks. Thank you for tuning in. If you know a parent with a 6th, 7th, 8th grader, ninth grader, 10th grader in high school that might find this helpful, please share this episode with them. You can do that by finding that small box with a tiny arrow that points up. That's the share button. Click that button. Text your friends the link to this episode. Put a little note in there recommending that they take a listen. That helps. If you do have questions, comments, or if you have an idea for an upcoming episode, please reach out to me by email. DM me on Instagram at prepwell underscore academy. Visit my blog. Check me out on Facebook. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I would love to hear from you. Until next week, goodbye, good luck, and never stop preparing. This podcast is brought to you by PrepWell Academy. PrepWell Academy is my one-of-a-kind online mentoring program that delivers to your ninth or 10th grader a short, highly relevant video from me every week, every Sunday, in fact, where I give them a heads up about what they should be thinking about to stay ahead of the game. To get these valuable lessons into your child's hands, please head over to PrepWellAcademy.com and enroll your child today.